Hi again, and welcome to Making Vinyl at Masterdisc. I'm Scott Hull. With me again today, Garrett Robinson. Well, today we've got a deep dive. And you know what I have to do when we go deep into <laughs> science. I got to get my Thomas Dolby. We got to complete the transformation. Yes, I have to go undercover into scientist Scott. All right. So the groove. So much is said, but I feel like every time I have a, somebody in the session, they just want to know, you know, what the heck is going on. So we cut some grooves and we look through the microscope and I either take a picture of it or I show them what it looks like and they look through the scope and they go, oh my God, you know, it looks like worms, like with edges and stuff. Well, it all, the word analog <laughs> means that the shape and form and substance of the groove is an analogy or an analog to the actual audio electronics, electronic signal that comes into the lathe. You mean it doesn't just mean warm? It doesn't mean, it just mean okay. more bass and, and you know, soft on the top of it, yeah. So let's start with the mono groove because to build off of, of the stereo, what's going on with stereo, we have to understand with the mono groove. So I'm gonna, pardon the hand puppets, but we're gonna, we're gonna use my hands. <laughs> Hopefully this isn't an insult in some other language. Um, <laughs> it's peace for us. So this is the, the groove and our needle rides in this groove, not up at the very top. It would be too noisy if it rode up at the top and the needle doesn't ride down to the bottom of the groove. It would be very, very noisy. It actually sounds awful down there. So we've got this range of contact area that we can ride in. The original mono record was made so with just a single voice coil to move the needle back and forth, just like your waveform does, you know, a sine wave that goes up and down or a complex waveform. So that needle moves back and forth and that's mono. That's a traditional mono record, 78s move back and forth like this. Any record that has no stereo information, the groove is as a fixed depth and it's moving back and forth. So um, that's all well and good. We enjoyed, you know, collectively we enjoyed mono records for a long period of time. And somebody got this idea that let's represent a, a, a more realistic space by using two channels. And it's not just channel A and channel B, it's how they blend together. If we were gonna record a violinist in the room and we had two microphones pick up, the, each microphone's picking up a, a slightly different signal from that violin. And when we translate it back and mix it and put it into headphones, it sounds more like we're in the room because we have sound bouncing off the walls and the ceiling and the floors. And that blend from those two microphones creates a sound that's primarily in the middle but that also has a divergent field. Even if it's just reflections off of different surfaces, that's what gives us our stereo. So the engineers at the time had to try to figure out how to make a stereo record. And I'm sure someone thought, well, let's just put two grooves down. You know, we'll have one groove that's the left channel and the other groove is the right channel, but it's not compatible. They realized that we, we have lateral motion, but we also have potential for vertical motion. But it's interesting, the louder portion of a signal of our typical music that we record, the louder portion is mono, is the center portion. If you look at the two signals next to each other, the side is much, much lower in level. So now we want to capture those two microphones in stereo into a single groove, but we want it to be compatible. And what compatible means here is that people with old mono turntables could play the record and people that have a new stereo turntable could also play the mono records. They wanted both forward and backward compatibility, something that our current computer manufacturers don't care anything about. <laughs> they just want to keep selling as new hardware. Well, and it, so it, it gives a, ref, a refreshed meaning to mono compatibility <laughs> concerns in, in mastering. Well, that was why. That was the original. That was the original issue, is if your stereo mix wasn't mono compatible, um, the vocal would <laughs> <laughs> the vocal would just disappear when it was on, heard on television. Um, because this is interesting because this groove going back and forth like this, I'm not going to show you, you try to draw the walls of your groove this way. As a lateral groove moving back and forth, this is mono. But as the left and the right channels modulate, the groove gets shallower and deeper. And that makes up the stereo component. But let's talk about how that happens because it's a nice little graphic, but you go like, huh, why? Um, an interesting 
the thing that you might be familiar with is when you're listening to a FM radio signal. Okay, um, maybe a lot of people aren't listening to radio anymore, but old enough to be interested in this, you may remember that when you're in your car listening to a radio station and you're driving away from the radio station, eventually that nice stereo sound um, disappears and you're left with kind of a thin mono sounding thing. I noticed this, I was born to be an engineer, you know, audio engineer. So I noticed this right away. And um, what's happening is FM is transmitted over the airwaves as a main carrier, which happens to be mono, and a sideband or side channel, which is the stereo. So I know this is hard to understand, not hard to understand, this is hard to believe, but left and right signals that drive your speakers can also be recorded and converted and manipulated as sum and difference. So the sum is everything that's in the middle, and then the difference is everything that's panned. Well, immediately someone asks, well, how does it know which channel to come out of? And that's the magic of this. It's actually the phase it goes, it goes deep into the science. <laughs> the physicist would say, it just does. It, it does. You don't even have to think about it. The, when you convert stereo to MS, mid-side, and then convert it back to stereo, the stuff that's on the left has a different phase relationship to mono than the stuff that was on the right. And that's maintained through that. So why is this important? Our lateral motion back and forth, we have lots of room to be able to cut a nice loud mono signal. But we don't have that much depth. We only have you know, a few mils to work with, a couple mils really to work with, both down and up. So literally, <laughs> there's a left and a right voice coil that's driving this stylus, but what it's actually encoding in the disc is mid-side, when you looked at from a lateral and vertical perspective. Let's say this is the left wall moving in and out, because you've got a voice coil hooked up to it, and this is the left channel moving in and out. So the, the voice coils? They're 45 degrees to the normal. They're 90 right. degrees to one another. Right. And so this one moves that side of the groove in and out this way, and this one moves that groove in and out that way. So when they're moving together in antiphase, in complete opposite phase, they go from shallow to deep, shallow to deep. Now you add lateral to that, and you get the worms with the squiggles, squiggles and, and, and all, all the things. We'll show you some pictures so, so you can differentiate this. But wait, there's one more little interesting tidbit because complete mono compatibility needs to ensure that this lateral groove happens in mono. And in a scenario just like this, if you had a positive going audio signal into both channels, then the groove's gonna get deeper. And that's wrong. We want the groove to move to the side. Mm -hmm. So they deliberately, inside the equipment, reverse the phase of one channel so that a positive going audio signal produces a positive sweep this way and a negative excursion this way. Mm -hmm. So that and that creates our lateral. All right, so if you're a big mono record fan, you might notice that we're deriving mono from this MS. Not quite the same thing as cutting a discrete singular channel mono record. All right, so there's a small population of mono enthusiasts out there, and um, they would certainly correct me vehemently if I didn't mention this <laughs> that a cut, a mono cut record, is not the same as playing back a stereo record with the mono switch on. Very different uh, in the way that the, the groove is made and uh, they believe it's, it's much truer to the original source by using one transducer, one voice coil to move the groove back and forth as opposed to deriving mono from the antiphase of the two coils. Okay, it's splitting hairs, that's so why I got the lab coat on, but there is a difference and it's a, it's a notable difference and quite frankly, anything that the consumer can hear is real. So on playback, your phono cartridge <laughs> is labeled left and right channels as positive and negative. But what you don't know is inside one of those voice coils is actually wired backwards. So that when you play that audio signal back, you get coincident left and right together, not moving out of phase. Um, I can almost see the glaze in your eyes. I can only <laughs> imagine what's happening to the audience. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the point is to get a little heady about it. Yeah, but. admittedly, this is a real deep dive. Um, this is something that uh, usually takes me 15 or 20 minutes just to get people to have sort of an aha moment. And then it's after, you know, looking at the grooves and then thinking about 
you know, how we would actually make them that they can sort of believe, there's still skepticism because yeah. it just doesn't make sense. Um, the biggest one for me is how um, you can literally take the left and right signal, you know, two separate, you know, a left channel and a right channel, positive and negative, and turn that into sum and a difference yeah. in two channels and then turn it back. Yeah, when, I, when I first got into mastering, I found some indifference out of necessity uh, for some recordings that had a hard lack of a defined center. Right. And I started playing with that and I found it to be an incredibly powerful tool and it's so simple to encode and, and decode to and from some indifference. Right. But at the same time, it's a completely foreign when we live in a world of two channels and we now it's two channels again, but thought of completely differently. Yeah. Uh, maybe just to summarize what we've, what the groove geometry is doing here. We started out with the mono groove, just the lateral motion, the lateral. just the back and yep. forth makes, it's analogous to our um, audio. This. To to our uh, the the waveform we're seeing on TV and on computer. If your waveform looks like a sine wave, then this groove will move back and forth. In it, if you look, view it from the top, it'll look just like that same sine wave. And now, because uh, engineers decided, or some someone came along and said stereo is pretty cool, how do we get this to people? We're not going to reinvent the wheel. We're going to make the wheel jump. <laughs> I guess right. We're going to make we're going to make the wheel bounce. Um, so we added, we, we used that vertical lateral, the sum and difference, the mid-side decoding technology to add the vertical motion, which gives us the width, that gives us the stereo, right. without changing the equipment that consumers uh, have to use. Yep. And um, it's not like a down mix. It's not a... It's the whole thing. It's the whole thing. Yeah. It's literally a different way of describing the same electrical signals. You can go in and out from MS to left and right and back and forth, you know, hundreds of times with the only degradation being the quality of your cable and the op amps that are in the circuit. <laughs> That's as deep as we can get into the groove without you actually getting in there and looking <laughs> at it yourself. So um, I hope it was enjoyable. Um, and if not, I hope you've already skipped on to another one by now. <laughs> um, thanks for watching. Uh, there definitely should be a prize for someone that stuck through this whole thing. Send me, you know what, put a note in the, uh, in the uh, comments if you've gotten to the end and just give me a thumbs up. That lets me know you got all the way to the end. Thanks a bunch. See you next time. Thanks, Garrett. Thank you, Scott. Making vinyl at MasterDisc, the deep dive.